hello and welcome to another vlog in my room again this one is an experience one talking about all the experiences i've done and things i've done and places i've been over the years this one is generally about going to the national television awards which if you're not watching from the uk is a is a, an award show broadcast live on tv every january from the o2 arena in london it used to be broadcast from the Albert, the Royal Albert Hall in London, but then obviously they probably felt it needed a bigger venue, so they went to the O2. It was the first time, this was 2011 when they first went to the O2, and my sister thought, because we used to watch it, we watch it all the time, we're avid TV fans, especially EastEnders, and she thought, oh, let's, we can buy tickets. So she thought, we'll buy tickets and we'll go. So we went with Dad, the first year, 2011, except we had a prior engagement early that day, so we couldn't get there early. We wanted to do the red carpet, we couldn't get there that early, so our ticket number, our wristband number for the red carpet wasn't really hot, good, so we were right behind loads and loads and loads of people. Steph, my sister, managed to get to the front to an extent. She stood there watching people go by, telling me who was going by, and Dad, because I'm quite small, Dad picked me up and he was filming a few people going by, taking a few pictures. It wasn't the best experience, it was nice to see people in the flesh going down the red carpet. This was in Jan this was in mid January time, so it was freezing cold and the likes of. But once you got your wristband, you had to queue keep queuing. And once you got your wristband, what was it about lunchtime, you could go off and then it was a certain time you come back and start queuing again. And it was stupid because they tried to do it in wristband order, except nobody was actually in order. And say number one could be right at the back of this massive, not queue, it was just this sea of people. And everybody else was, and then there was like higher numbers at the front. So everyone had to push through to get in and it was a pain in the ass, basically. So red carpet on the first year wasn't really the best experience. But after that, second year we decided to go again, 2012, we decided to take Mo instead. And because she's disabled, we got into the uh, disabled area. Not that there was many disabled people allowed on the car because it wasn't really a big space, wheelchair spaces days. But uh, we did get in because we were, got there and was the last disabled person allowed on the red carpet. Which was quite lucky, really. We had to queue all day, but thankfully, there was a section where all the disabled could queue by the other queue, but out of the way. So basically, we could get our wristband and go off, and then come back later. Whereas everybody else had to stay in the queue, or they could let one of their friends out to get something and then come back. People were because by then they were making us all queue in the freezing cold in the middle of January. So they made us queue in January for in in the freezing cold. But there was a what was it, Starbucks? Just inside was a Starbucks. And some people occasionally used to rush in there and keep warm because it was like a sauna in there. And it was just really nice. But all the disabled, all the disabled people could go off and then come back about four o'clock ish. So we used to go off wait for our wristband, then go off and have a meal and then come back, which was really nice. We had, we had blankets as well, so we kept warm. It wasn't too, too bad, thankfully. And then it was a get to the red carpet. It was a mad dash to the red carpet, which was quite funny, really, because it was quite a walk down the uh, backstage bit to actually get to the red carpet and get to the disabled section. So me and Steph would run quicker get to the disabled section, try and save a gap for mum to put a wheelchair in. So that was nice. And um, 2012 was the first time we actually managed to do it properly and meet some really good celebrities and the likes of. For instance, um, 
we met quite a few from EastEnders. There's one thing Steph wanted was EastEnders stars. And uh, we're standing there. But talking to people as they go by, you never know who's going to come down the red carpet. So you have a list of people you would like to come down the red carpet, who you think might, and who you want to meet. But then there'd be these mystery people come down, and you don't, didn't know they were going to come, and you didn't think about them coming, and it was really good. And there's us all standing there chatting to Fatima Whitbread, one of the Olympians. She'd done a show, I think it was, was it I'm a Celebrity or something that year? And uh, so she was there doing that for I'm a Celebrity. And we was chatting to her and all of a sudden Steph goes, there he is, he's coming down the red carpet. Talking about John Partridge, of course we knew who he was. she was on about. Because that's the one person she was waiting for more than anybody else in the whole entire world who's waiting for John Partridge to come down the red carpet. She had this Attitude magazine with a picture of John Partridge on the front so she had to get it signed first, didn't she? And then every year, for a few years, we used to write to EastEnders just to their uh, help desk and ask for a set of blank cast cards. Because in those days they used to give out a whole set of blank cast cards for free. You didn't even have to put a stamp on the letter. You could just send them a letter asking them with a self with a self addressed envelope, no stamp, and they'd send back all these blank cast cards of the current cast, which was really good because we'd take them with us to the National Television Awards and see if we could uh, how many we can get signed. It was quite a faff to find the right one when they come down the carpet because it's quite quick, so we didn't really get many signed. But I think we got about five or six signed that year because we met um, John Partridge. Shane Ritchie and there was quite a few others as well that came down I can't really exactly remember everybody that came down oh fat boy um what's his name um yeah I've forgotten Ricky Norwood he came down the red carpet he came down the red carpet every year every year he was in his stand as we were there he came down the red carpet and we always had a photo I always had a photo of him he was really nice and one good thing then all of a sudden on the other side, because we was on one side and you could see the other side where they was all signing. Quite a few of the celebrities would miss out the disabled section. I don't know why. Either they didn't notice or they just passed it by. Quite rude, really. But uh, sometimes I used to yell behind you and some of the celebrities would turn round. For instance, I could tell the back of Stephen Moffat, who was the head writer for Doctor Who, I could tell that he, tell his back of his head, Tell him from the back of his head. He turned round and I said, I said to him, there's Stephen Moffat. He didn't even know who I was on about. I said, he's the head writer for Doctor Who. And Steph goes, you can tell him from the back of his head. I said, oh, hey, Stephen, turn round. And there he goes, turning round. So, um, yeah, that was quite fun that year. Um, who else did we meet? Oh, yeah, Mother Goes Later On. I need the loo. This this was still in 2012. I need the loo, so I've got to leave the red carpet. Except she wasn't allowed to leave the red carpet properly until the end because disabled people had to go down the red carpet to get to the actual get inside because it's the only way to get the disabled in if you're on the red carpet. Which I can see the point. So uh, they made us move out of the way, didn't they? Except where they made us stand was right in front of where all the cars pulled up. And I mean where all the cars pulled up. We... Uh, Steph yelled, I know him, this bloke comes, gets out of this car and he goes, uh, I know him and she goes, uh, and I looked at him because he had a beard and I looked at him and this bloke's got a beard and I'm like, it's Colin Morgan and she's like, who's that? I said, it's Merlin, if you all know, from the BBC show Merlin and she was like, oh so it is and, and I was like, it's Colin Morgan and nobody knew what the hell I was on about since I yelled, oh look, it's... Um, Merlin, everybody wanted him and like he's standing in front of me, I'm having him first. So yeah, got his autograph. Charlie Brooks, who plays Janine in East Enders, came got out of the car as well and she was really nice and I mean really nice. She must be a really good actress to play someone like Janine and then go on to play someone like then be really nice in real life. Which is what I like really. So uh yeah, we both got a picture with John Partridge. There was no brainer. Shane Ritchie came down the red carpet and I got his photo. And I was quite pleased because I'm quite a Shane Ritchie fan. So that was a nice one. 
so uh and then um oh yeah and then all of a sudden we're standing out the way where we were stood before there was this gap left because no one had filled it so we're just standing there all of a sudden this bloke comes down the red carpet and i went it's bradley james and he plays um king arthur in merlin because i'm a really really big merlin fan and uh I said, quick, oh, this way. So me and Steph go back to the red carpet, stand where we stood before, and he starts chatting to us. And he goes, oh, you're twins. And he was asking our names because he wanted to personalise our autographs. It was really nice, it was. It was really good. Next year was 2013. It was the year it snowed. On that particular mo, at that particular day, it hadn't snowed because on those in the old, in those days, it, the actual National Television Awards was a Wednesday. So, and midweek it hadn't snowed. It had snowed the weekend before because we went to see the Harry Potter tour and it had snowed. And all the Harry Potter tour from the studios was really snowy and outdoors was really snowy really nice then we went to see Ronan Keating in Brighton the day after which was Sunday and it was a blizzard an absolute blizzard horrible weather it was so we decided so um come Wednesday it was all right it was still very cold and bitter because it had snowed and it was frosty so it was horrible we had to wait outside again the usual waiting and waiting and waiting and there was this, um, every year when we was on the red carpet, this woman would turn up with her kid. Must have been about, I don't know, 10, 12, something like that. He had a heart condition and he couldn't really walk far, so he was in a wheelchair. But she was using him to get on the red carpet. She'd bring at least five or six kids with her and, another, and her sister. So her sister and her kids would get all on the red carpet and they'd have photos of every single person Every single member of the family would have a single photo, then a whole family photo of everybody. Sometimes made us next to her miss out on people because of that, and it really peed me right off. She was annoying. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot to say, 2012, we also met Ant and Deck. Ant stayed for about a minute, to sign, enough time to sign the book, and left. Deck, in the other hand... I had a photo with which I will insert as for as we go along so yeah he and he was really nice because I'm a Newcastle fan so he really liked the hat I was wearing at the time I was wearing a woolly Newcastle hat which I like to show him every time he was on the red carpet 2013 I met um, Bradley James again this time I thought about Merlin and brought my series 3 Merlin box set with me which is really nice. He they signed. He, he actually signed that. But then he was the only one, the only Merlin member I met because, as per use, Colin Morgan was late. Typical, wasn't it? No, one person I wanted on my box set and I didn't get. It. Can't complain really because I got his autograph anyway. But it would have been nice. Had a wounded me. Oh yeah, we met. A few more EastEnders stars again. Perry Fenwick had a photo of me. I'm not sure he really liked me. 2011 was on the red carpet. Well, we was wandering up and down the red carpet because we couldn't actually get on to see the red carpet properly. Perry Fenwick came along singing Arm Forever Blowing Bubbles because he's a West Ham supporter. And I yelled, boo, get a proper football team. And he noticed I had a Newcastle bag on. And this other bloke started booing at me in jest. And it was so funny. <laughs> I don't think Perry was very pleased. And to, back to 2013. We met Adam Woodyat, who plays uh, Ian Bill in EastEnders, one of the longest running EastEnders stars, which was really nice. And it was so good. It, it's not the best character in the show but 
you get excited when you meet a legend from a TV show. Especially one that's been on it that long. So yeah, that was good. Then Mum was quite pleased because the year before it was the Olympics, 2012 Olympics in London. So uh, they um, had a theme of the Olympics and the loads of Olympians were there with their medals and she met a couple of Paralympians and got pictures with their medals and then um, she met Chris Hoy. I thought that was a bit dodgy because basically she um, he's quite tall and mother's in a wheelchair so it was a bit of a stoop but still at least you can say she had a picture. She had a picture with uh, Brian Cox which was quite nice, the Professor Brian Cox and it was just before his TV show came on she was looking forward to it so she had to tell him I had to say to him about uh, can't wait for your TV show and he was quite pleased that somebody met, actually remembered that. So yeah, that was good. We both had a picture with Fat Boy again, um, Ricky. He always came down the red carpet and was there, lovely as ever. And then Mother got her picture with um, Alan Carr, which was really nice. Basically... We got pictures with a few people here and there. We didn't do like the other woman did and got pictures of everybody who came along. Or as some people, I recognise this person or this person was quite popular so I got a photo with them. And then it's later, who are these people? I'm like, you got a picture with somebody, don't even know who they are. Like, what the hell is going on there? So, yeah, that was uh, intriguing. That was the year we had our banner, EastEnders to win. And where we were sat, we managed to get disabled seats right down the front by the by the celebrity section. And it was right where the EastEnders cast sat. So we were waving our banner at them and they was all putting their thumbs up at us. And when they left at the end, Adam Woodyatt and June Brown had left half a bottle of wine. I think they was quite drunk by the end. And uh, Perry Fenwick uh, snuck out at one point to do shots. And then came back later and all you see is him swaying around, waving at everybody. And it was like hilarious. It was so funny. Fourteen was the last year that my sister actually did the red carpet because it's the year she died. I will get onto that subject at a later date. But um, yeah, we got um, we went that year. This 2014 we went was really good year because the year before, the December before, should I say, was the uh, I'm a celebrity and. The King of the Jungle was Kian Egan from Westlife. And Westlife is our favourite ever band. Not the best member ever, but when you confronted with one member coming or the possibility of one member coming, it's better than nothing and you're really excited. There was one person on the red carpet who wanted to meet more than anybody else. And we managed to meet it. Insert photos. We both got photos because he came down the red carpet and he goes, um, and I go, I can see her talking about Jodie because we'd met Jodie's wife before because she was in Wonderland, part of the band Wonderland that Kian managed at one point, 2010 to 2011. And uh, we, we knew her and how she looked and I said, there she's over there. Where's the other one talking about Kian? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, I see him, he's over there, he's got to come this way. And everyone's like, who is he? And like, Kian Egan, like, who the hell is he? 
He won the jungle. Oh, I want him. He can come over and I can have a photo. I said, sod off, he's late. Because this was at the end of the carpet nearly. So he was late, rushing around. and But we managed to get his, auto, get his autograph because we brought this photo with us to get signed. And I said to her, I said to Steph, before we got on the red carpet, don't forget to tell Kian good luck. Because the day before we'd found out he was about to do an album. So we wanted to wish him good luck if, if he ever came down the red carpet. And he did. So I said, don't forget to tell him. And he looked at me and, I, and she said, oh, yeah, good luck with your album. And he was quite pleased with that. And then Steph had a photo with him and he was about to leave. And I said, not leaving before I've had a photo with you. Where am I supposed to be looking now? He's going, looking at the camera. So I got a pic. Mother interrupted me, so I had to stop. But here we starting again. I just glued the two pieces together. Anyway. So, yeah, we managed to meet Kian Egan, and that was quite good. Everyone else was a bit nervous, they didn't meet him. Like, you're not even a Westlife fan. You just like him because he was part of I'm a Celebrity. So, we got him, which was nice. Just before that, or a little while before that, there was this double-decker, London double-decker bus turn-up. All it said was E20 on the actual number. And I'm like, that's definitely EastEnders. And all we could see, see of people was EastEnders stars. Two whole decks full of EastEnders stars came down the carpet. Point was, it was a free-for-all because they came down quite quickly. So it was a point of grab all you can type business. Although Steph really wanted Samantha Womack because she collected all these EastEnders autographs by writing to the EastEnders cast. But Samantha didn't do through the mail, as they call it autographs requested for the mail so she had to uh, so I said to her when she got her blank cast cards put hers on top and then if you meet her you can get her autograph to put in your collection and the first thing I said when I saw the bus was Sam's on the top of that bus so as soon as she saw she was there she got quickly up her cast card and waited for her to come down the carpet she came down the carpet and got a photo with her, which was quite nice actually. She was quite pleased. Nice to have a EastEnders, um, well, I say legend, an old classic EastEnders as it was, Nassidy, Na Natalie Cassidy. Me and Steph both got photos with her, which was lovely. We also got, um, everyone was yelling Masood. Knitting Ganacho plays Masood. Everyone couldn't remember, most people didn't know half the names of the cast, so they was calling them after their cast, their character name. So everyone was yelling Masood. So when Knitting came up and took our autograph, did our autograph for us, he wrote, Love Masood. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> what is it? Danielle Harold and um, Perry Fenwick came down together and I got a couple of photos of them which was really nice because sometimes it was nice to take photos of the people coming down the carpet as well as the people down the carpet so that was good and um, Fat um, Ricky Norwood aka Fat Boy came down the carpet again did us a photo he was always nice and always stopped for everybody Steph was quite pleased she got a photo this time so that was good uh, I don't know why I bothered, but he's a nice bloke anyway. We got our photo, me and mother got our photos with the silver fox. With Scofie. He was quite nice, actually. Not really a fan of watching him most of the time, but he was quite nice. And I like him doing all the... I watched this morning occasionally, and he's quite nice. So, yeah, it was a nice experience. I said to Steph, Tom... Tom Ellis came down the red carpet. Most of you might know him as Lucifer. I've never watched the show, mind. But I still keep up to date. Um, he played uh, a doctor in um, EastEnders. This was way back. The mid-2000s, probably now. I can't remember exactly. And uh, he came down the red carpet and said, you got to get his autograph. She couldn't remember who he was. And I said, it's Tom Ellis. He played the doctor in EastEnders. Dr. Oliver Cousins. I can still even remember the name. Weird. Anyway, so we had to have our... I, we had to get an autograph for him, but I actually had a photo of him, and he's so good looking. Insert photo. So good looking in real life. It's unbelievable. People were so jealous when I got a photo of him. 
he went to Comic Con, did a photo, it must be about night eighty five quid, and I got, I got him for free. So yeah, that was good. Mother got a photo with um, Craig River Hallwood. In real life, he's quite nice, quite the dame, but very nice. Oh, and um, I have my Broadchurch DVD. Well, I had a Broadchurch DVD and I misplaced it. And I really wanted to take it with me in case any of them came down the red carpet. Mainly David Tennant. Wouldn't get that much luck anyway, but you never know. But I couldn't find nowhere and I was really peed off. So I went out to HMV and bought a new one, didn't I? So, just in case I could get it signed. And Livia Coleman came down the red carpet and I was really excited. Except she passed us by because all these bloody um, press were after her, weren't they? I, I moved around the back of all the disabled people and waved my DVD cover at her. And she saw it and I said, can you point in at it to say, can you come back and sign? Ten minutes later she comes back, signs for everybody in the, in the disabled section and comes to me. Signs my DVD cover and then... Uh, I had a photo with her and she was really, really nice. Insert photo. Yeah, she was really, really nice. I will leave some playlists, links to playlists in the bottom of this, in the description, so you can see what some of the videos I took at the National Television Awards, which was, I think, yeah, which was really good. Then um, we said to ourselves after a while, we said, right, that's it. We're leaving about five minutes. We're not five minutes and then we'll leave. And uh, then all of a sudden, Christine Blakely comes down the red carpet. Everybody knows who her other half is, Frank Lampard. As Steph is a great big Chelsea fan, she had this really big Chelsea jacket on. And she was really excited that Frank Lampard was coming down the red carpet. Even She got a photo of him and she even, he even gave her a kiss. She was well pleased. So, yeah, that was a good uh, day. Good red carpet. And that was the last time Steph went down the red carpet, unfortunately. So yeah, the next year I went with a friend, two friends actually, just so they could use the tickets up and we did the red carpet. I got a, this time I had no one to take the photos apart from myself so I was taking selfies, weren't I? And they were really crap, or well, most of them were anyway. I had one with Paul Hollywood, he was quite nice and that came out alright. One with um, Jake Wood. Who plays Max Brandon on his standards was really come out well. The Shane and the Jesse one didn't come out very well. But there's this great big spotlight behind us, so and I'm not really good at selfies at that time. I think I'm better now at them, but back then it was two years three years ago four years ago now it was. So yeah, four years ago and it wasn't really good. And then there was uh Deck no Ant, Ant and Deck were there. The same people with their son and all their kids were on the red carpet doing all these celebrities it took so long with deck that he wouldn't come my way but i did point at my hat because i was wearing my newcastle hat again and he did put his thumbs up so i was quite pleased and stayed long enough so i could get a selfie it was slightly dodgy but you can still see it's ant better than some of the selfies didn't really get many mind and i was really annoyed because after a while I was taking photos on the red carpet, insert photos on the red carpet, some of Ant and Dick and um, a few others. Ant and Dick, is there Ant and Dick ones? There is somewhere. Yeah, there's the Ant and Dick ones of mine. I'll insert here. I took 
couple of them on the red carpet. It was really nice. And then Warwick Davis comes down the red carpet. The way he was positioned and the fact he's really short. Um, that we couldn't get a photo with him. But nice just to take a photo of him. And I got a really nice one. Insert. Then there was... Um, who else was it? Didn't think we met. Oh yeah, and then I was taking photos generally, and my bloody batteries fell out, didn't they? Until Anna moved later on, one of my friends I was with, Anna moved later on before we left the red carpet. I couldn't find them, could I? So I couldn't put them back in and take more photos. I was really annoyed, but still, Dad took a few photos from the other end. Because he was around the other side with uh, one of my other friends, which was nice. So I think that was the last time we did the red carpet. After that, we started, well. Two thousand and fifteen with what I've just talked about, they started charging me to get on the red carpet. But it was like two to hundred quid a ticket as well as a ticket to the show. Which wasn't worth anything because people complained that the water they got given was horrible and the autograph book they got given fell apart. It's better to go and buy your own, I suppose. But you could get on the red carpet for free if you queue for like you normally did and then hope there's any room left. Which could work sometimes, might not. I wouldn't bother work, even doing it anymore. I still go to the National Television Awards, and if you're close enough to the celebrity area, at the end or maybe even in the intervals, you may get a celebrity come over and sign something. This year, no, next year is now January the 28th is the next one coming up. I might actually buy an autograph book because we're on B block. They cut all the A block off the no, O2 Arena cut all of A block so they can use it for these celebrities. B block is the first block where the Joe public can sit. So this, like the next year I got the tickets just before I went to the last one because they were on pre so I thought, while well, I got the money I'm going to buy them. And I got B block, row K, which is quite good actually. So it'd be quite close to the uh, celebrity section. So we should be able to walk over to the celebrity section and hope we can, somebody might come over. You never know, or we can just take some photos celeb spot as they call it should be quite a lot of fun i think hoping anyway you never know how it might go or if you're quick enough at the end to shuffle across if you're on the tiered section to shuffle across to the front tier and lean over there might be a celebrity or two still hanging around that will sign something for you or just pose and take you can take a photo of them or you just say hi or congratulations as they go by which i've done in the past and is really good so yeah that's fun so nowadays it's not worth a dime getting on the red carpet it's too much like hard work that i think the days best days of the red carpet are long gone now there's too much money involved so yeah that's my experiences on the red carpet any questions or any comments please leave them in the comments section thank you for listening peace out